everybody. First of all, thanks very much for giving me the opportunity to talk to you all uh, over video today. Um, I'll try and make three points about the industry we want in the time that I've been allotted. Firstly, I think it's important to look back as well as forward. And to remember that Ethical Trading Initiative, Fair Web Foundation and many others put the right to earn a living wage in their standard for member companies nearly 25 years ago. Since then, production globally has more than doubled. Consumers buy more clothes every year, but workers still live in the same state of poverty. It's important to analyze why we failed. And I count the Clean Clothes campaign in that we, as we've been part of many projects and campaigns and initiatives on this topic in the same time frame. It's an entire generation of women who were unable to send their children to school, to live healthy lives or pay taxes to make their society more sustainable. If we are to achieve the common goal that we all have for the industry we want, which I think can be captured to say socially, economically and ecologically just, then we stand to learn as much from our failures as from our limited successes to date. Looking back will also enable us to envisage a radically different business model within an achievable time frame, our time frame still. The industry has changed so dramatically over the past 25 years, driven by globalization, fast fashion and digitalization, that there is no reason why it can't change as dramatically again, but now driven by the need for sustainability, resilience and social and economic justice. This is an industry that actually knows how to run a workplace safety and with respect for labor rights. It has done so in the past. It knows how to produce and consume without negatively impacting the natural environment and the climate. It is doing so at a small scale. The current business model though is preventing it from applying that knowledge to the scale that it needs. If there is one upside to COVID-19, it is that a significant transition is now a given. It's, the question is just how do we make it just? It's also clear though, eight months in, that the costs of the COVID crisis are being offset downwards into the supply chain with those who can the least afford it the most negatively impacted. A recent survey found 80% of the garment workers with children are now skipping meals to feed their kids. This brings me to my second point. Long-term overall change can't come at the expense of addressing those short-term needs. Workers need relief as well as reform or to use the UNGP terminology remedy as well as prevention and mitigation. I think it's important as outlined in the, in the, the brief for the, the project that the UNGP gets used as the only global standard of expected conduct for all business enterprises wherever they operate. And to bear in mind that the UNGP emphasizes that remedy goes hand in hand with prevention and mitigation. And also emphasizes that the obligations of companies exists independent of the state's ability or willingness to fulfill their own human rights obligations and over and above compliance with national laws and regulations. I repeat this because in our experience a lot of these initiatives bringing together a broad group of stakeholders are spending a lot of time either finger pointing around the supply chain or waiting for others to move first or for all to move at the same time. The UNGP actually put an end to that notion. We can act and we have to act now each according to our own obligations. The industry we want can start tomorrow, with brands publicly committing to ensure workers will be paid their wages in full and their severance in case they lose their jobs, by paying a small price premiums on orders going forward into a global fund. Our estimate now is that less than 10 cents a t-shirt will provide the economic relief garment workers need to survive the crisis and strengthen unemployment protection in the future. Brands can negotiate a legally binding global agreement along the lines of the Bangladesh Accord to deal with this global pandemic crisis, just like they dealt with the safety crisis in Bangladesh after Rana Plaza. Such an agreement can include a worker and complaint and investigation mechanism to deliver remedy for the most urgent cases of violation of safety, union busting and sexual harassment, all of which are on the rise given COVID. The 10 cents a t-shirt will go a long way to do this. That short-term need can be fulfilled in parallel to developing a long-term time-bound action plan for a just transition. I think that just transition, as we all know, will require transforming purchasing practices, rebalancing power relations both between buyers and suppliers and between suppliers and workers, and importantly, 
an increase in legislation and regulation, holding companies legally accountable for social and environmental abuses, but also bringing negative market consequences in addition to incentives. Thank you very much. Looking forward to collaborating on reaching such an agreement.